Coming up on Food for Thought, it's kitchenware. Chef Paul Magnet will be covering the basic items every home kitchen should have for anyone who's moving out on their own. It's all next on Food for Thought here on MCTV. Everybody has to eat, but not everyone knows nutrition. To help solve this crisis, Food for Thought provides some helpful info to show how to eat healthy. Now, we don't promise to return you to your high school playing weight or that you'll be able to squeeze back into a size 8 dress, but we will help you choose healthy meals that are quick and cheap. Each episode is produced with the help of the Hospitality Management Department at Montgomery College and the Marriott Hospitality Center on the Rockville campus. Food for Thought is an MCTV production. You can view this program and many others anytime on our YouTube and podcast sites. Okay, so you've had the appetizer. Now for the meal. Let's gather the ingredients and start cooking. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Chef Paul, and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about how to set up your first kitchen, whether it's your apartment with roommates or getting out on your own for the very first time. Too many times, I think, uh, we pay attention to many advertisers or marketing uh, efforts of companies and they make us believe that we must have a very expensively equipped kitchen. And I'm going to show you things from my kitchen at home, having done this for many, many years, that I use cooking at home and I keep to the essentials. You won't see the expensive things in my kitchen at home. I use those at work where we're feeding thousands of people every day. When I'm cooking at home, I'm cooking for a very small group, my family and my friends. So first I'm going to talk about the different hand tools that we need. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about pots and pans that you need to use to cook and bake with. And then we're gonna talk about some of the items over here that you would need for baking or roasting. And those essentially are the different types of cooking you're going to do at home. So let's start off first with the most important, at least what I feel the most important tool is, and those are your knives. So many times you will see specials on TV or in magazines about a special knife that can do it all. What I'm going to tell you is you need a non-serrated, serrated means a curved blade. You need a non-serrated knife and you need one French knife and one paring knife and you can do almost anything in the kitchen with those two knives. So here are a few tips what I want you to remember. It's better to buy one good set of knives. Typically you can find a set such as you see here that is of the same brand name and is a good steel knife. Not serrated because it won't, a serrated knife won't slice your product, it will tear product. Serrated knives are good for slicing bread and that's about it. So if you have these two knives, the first one I'm going to just show you very quickly is what's called a French knife. This French knife is typically six or eight inches long and has about a one to a two inch width in the blade and is very thick across what we call the bolster. And in this knife, it is one that you can use for cutting, slicing, chopping, dicing, cubing up meat. You could even use it if you needed to, to do some light butchering of saying like cutting apart a chicken or a turkey or a ham after it's cooked and gives you a lot of utility. The second knife I want to talk about is what's called a paring knife. It typically has a very small blade and it is only about one to two inches long. And this is great for working some of the smaller uh, production work that you would have to do if you were doing small slicing or if you were carving out something. Uh, it will give you the ability to do all those things. And so I, this may be a surprise to you, but these are the only two knives I use in my kitchen at home. I have a full set of knives for the professional I work, feeding thousands of people each day, 
but that is appropriate when I'm doing production for a living. It's noteworthy to tell you that I enjoy cooking so much that even after cooking a full day at work and the restaurants that I work in, I still come home and cook for my family. And I keep it simple with just these items, but I enjoy cooking so much that it's just not something I ever get tired of doing. To me, it's like an occupational hobby. I enjoy it very much. The next item I'm going to show you is a vegetable peeler. I know it's not terribly technical, but it's a very important part of having hand tools in your kitchen because if you have a vegetable peeler and you're peeling maybe carrots or potatoes, you save more of the carrot and potato to cook and then eat. If you were to use a knife to try and cut the skins off, you're going to cut too much off and throw it away. And so it is essential for you to have one of these to prepare the food in your kitchen. Next, probably doesn't need a great deal of explanation, but it's funny how people forget that you need a can opener. There'll be times when it's appropriate to buy canned foods. Uh, it's good for emergencies. You know that if we ever had a shelter in place or if you had an opportunity that you needed to keep canned goods on the shelf, you have to have a way to open it. So I mentioned that a church key is probably the best type. There are many different brands. I don't endorse any other one brand over the other, simply to let you know that you should have one in that drawer underneath the microwave counter. The next item is you just need one pair of tongs. There are many different types out there, different uh, price points and different features. It doesn't have to be anything special. You just need to be able to go into a pot, squeeze it and pull out whatever you want. So I've got one, one particular kind here, but it doesn't have to be that kind. But for safety and for removing or stirring pasta, picking up vegetables, maybe turning a piece of meat in a pan that you're cooking. Tongs are an essential part of what you should have in there for safety and to make cooking more enjoyable and easier. The next item on my list is a spatula. And what I've shown you here is a spatula that has a rubber flexible end. The reason that's important is you probably are going to want to have a Teflon saute or, or uh, saucepan, and you never want to use a metal utensil in that pan because you'll scratch the Teflon. It will come loose, get into the food, and then that could hurt you if you ingest that, and that could be harmful to you. So I always work with a rubber or plastic spatula when cooking at home for that reason. The next item is you need what's called a slotted spoon or a perforated spoon. This just helps you pull food out of the pan that you're cooking and leave the liquid into the pan. This may be for boiling potatoes, this may be for poaching or blanching vegetables. There are many, many uses for it and a very good tool to have that makes cooking easier and makes cleanup a little easier for you as well. Then I have a baking spatula. This is one of the items that is very helpful to have to make sure that you don't waste food. When you are taking food out of the mixing bowl and putting it into either a baking pan or if you've made mashed potatoes and you're trying to get everything out to go into your serving dish onto the table, this will save you money because you're not throwing away food. It lets you pull all of the food, all of the sauce, all of the cake mix, whatever you're making, get everything out of the bowl and onto the plate or into the pan. Next, it's very good to have some type of inexpensive whip to beat eggs, to mix a cake, to even make a sauce on the stove where you're going to make a pan sauce where you cooked a piece of meat in the pan and then you're adding a little flour and maybe some vegetable stock to the pan, whipping together so that you then can make a nice gravy to go over either the meat or the vegetables that you're serving and it's very helpful. Well, I think the next thing is let's talk a little bit about pots and pans. It may surprise you that I only have about four of these at home in my kitchen. 
The first and most important, let me reach and bring over, is what I call a stock pot. This doesn't have to be a very large, oversized, exaggerated. Something that can hold about a gallon and a half to two gallons of water will serve you well. I do recommend that you have a lid that fits to this and the different types of use for this. You could do everything from making pasta to making a big bowl of nice soup or chili in the, the winter season when you enjoy those things. You also could make big pots of spaghetti sauce for a party and allows you to make a larger portion if you're having a larger group of people over. You could use it to boil potatoes if you're making mashed potatoes. There's all types of things that you could use this for. And if you time the way that you're cooking your food, you only need one because you can cook one food item and then hold it over warm in the oven and then you can use it to cook the next item. So you don't feel that you have to have three or four of these in order to cook a meal. I just have one and I cook my food accordingly and hold it warm. The first item's warm as I cook the second items and it's very helpful to me. Well, the next is your colander. While maybe not a must have, it's fairly inexpensive and just makes it so much easier, easier to strain that pasta, that spaghetti, that pen pasta, or those peas and carrots that you've just cooked off and strain it out so you then can take it to the next level of your preparation. And it's very helpful in your cooking and also adds a degree of safety. Next is a sauce pot. This is a small one. They come in varying size. You probably want one that's about a two to a three quart sauce pot. You can do everything from heat up and make spaghetti sauce to heating up soup to making smaller portions of vegetables. You can make a sauce in it. You can make risotto. There's all types of neat things that you can use this for. And you really only need one. If you wanted two, it would probably be a fair investment for you. It should also have a lid so that you can contain the heat. Sometimes I don't use the lid when I'm cooking, but when I, take, when I take this pot off of the stove and hold it over here, I'll put this on there in order to keep things hot while it's sitting and reserving and I finish the rest of my meal. And that's why I recommend that you have a lid for it. You're going to need some type of fry pan or a saute pan. I brought an example of the one I use at home. This is a Teflon coated pan. I prefer the Teflon coated for this reason. It gives me more options. If I'm cooking eggs or pancakes or something that will typically stick to a regular pan, if I have Teflon and maybe a little vegetable spray or if I use some olive oil, it's very much easier to pick up and looks much better when I put it on the plate after I'm cooking it. Next, let's talk about baking items. I know that everyone well, I know, I, I think I know that people love the new multicolored mixers that can do all these different things. But guess what Chef Paul uses at home to make mashed potatoes, cake mixes, and others. I use this little handheld mixer. This particular one is about 20 years old. It has multiple five different speeds and cleanup is easy because I just press the button and then I put these in the dishwasher. And then I wrap this up and put it back away in the drawer that I used it and I don't need a lot of counter space. That's probably important if you're in a, a new apartment, you probably have a smaller place. You don't have endless counter space like we do in restaurants. And I will tell you that this is easy, quick to put away, and then I don't have anything else blocking my counter space as I put it out there. Well, you need two more things typically with baking. You're gonna need a mixing bowl. You don't need anything fancy. This mixing bowl I'm showing you here, I bought at a thrift store. You shouldn't feel that you have to go and buy all brand new items at an expensive store. Many of these items are all available at a local thrift store where someone's moving and can't take everything with them, but they have very nice items. They donate them to a good cause and that cause then sells items at a significant discount. And I shop at thrift stores all the time for kitchen utensils and things that might be helpful to me in the kitchen. And I pay a fraction of the cost for that. And I highly recommend it. 
So a nice heavy ceramic mixing bowl is very nice. I can do so many things and this has become one of my favorite bowls at home. I make cornbread in this. I make Sunday morning pancakes for the family. I make brownies to take to school and I mix cookie doughs for cookie day in the middle of the week with the family. So there are all types of uses for this including making your mashed potatoes or any other item that you might need to use your mixer or your hand whip when putting things together. Because baking is so exact and not very forgiving in the amount of ingredients, you should have a measurement cup or a bowl, depending on how large it is. Uh, it doesn't have to be this particular brand name. This just happens to be the one I have at home. It has and standard United States measurements on both sides. And this is very helpful in making sure that you have the right amount of ingredients to go into your formula so that you have the delicious baked goods that you want to have when you're finished. Really, I only recommend two types of pans that you must have to start out with. The first is what we call a half size sheet pan. Restaurants use full size sheet pans. This is a half size sheet pan. This is good for doing so many things from making pizza to focaccia bread, which is very easy to make, very few ingredients, to making cookies, brownies. You even can use this pan to make a sheet cake. You fill it up with your batter, make your sheet cake, and then when you pull it out, you cut it in half here and you stack the two pieces and you have a beautiful sheet cake instead of having a cake pan. You can do it with this half sheet pan. The last item I'm going to talk about today is a roasting pan. This particular roasting pan was purchased. It's in good shape, it's clean, but shows some wear, but it was purchased for $3 at a thrift store. Many commercials or marketing or product companies will try and convince you you need a metal rack to hold the meat so it doesn't touch the bottom of the pan. Well, here's a cooking tip for you. Create your own rack. Dice up a carrot, an onion, and a potato and put it in the bottom and then put your meat on top of that. Then as it cooks, all the juices and all of the essence and vitamins and minerals from those vegetables will collect together in a liquid in the bottom of the pan and then you can use that for your gravy, for the dish. And it is very, very healthy because you've recaptured the flavors and all of the vitamins and the minerals that you need for your body right there with whole cooking and creating a delicious meal. You don't need a fancy metal rack to hold the meat away from the bottom of the pan so it doesn't burn. You can put vegetables in there and a little bit of water and accomplish the same thing. Furthermore, you can roast all different types of meats with this, from pork, beef, lamb, all types of poultry, and use the same pan to do it in. All you have to do is cover it with foil, put a little water in the bottom, and it'll steam and bake very nicely. The last few minutes, remove the foil and it'll roast to a nice, crispy skin or outer part of the meat, which makes it so delicious for you. I want to strongly encourage you to use a plastic cutting board, not a wood one. Plastic is clean, wipeable, and non-porous, which means that it will not provide an environment for bacteria in between uses, regardless of how well you clean it and sanitize it. The problem with non-plastic, such as wood, is that wood is porous and it can hold on to bacteria and pathogens which could cause you problems with your food later even if you think you've handled everything perfectly safe if you put it on a cut wood cutting board you never know what's in there my saying with employees is a wood cutting board is really a science experiment that you don't have control of so i encourage you not to use wood cutting boards for your own health and safety i hope you've enjoyed this time talking about just the basics that you need and hearing from a professional tell you it's okay not to buy expensive, fancy kitchen equipment. What's important is your skill and having fun when you cook with your friends and family. 
and cooking healthy food to make sure that you have a long and happy life. Thank you for joining us today and I wish you well. We'd like to thank Chef Paul Magnet for his expert guidance and recommendations. Here again are the price points for all the items. Please note the prices are approximate and are for basic consumer grades. Please remember to also work safely in the kitchen.